Have you ever spent hours learning a big flashy visual effect only to realize it doesn't actually work for your edit? I've been cutting broadcast TV commercials for over 20 years and what I've learned is this, it's the simple VFX that pro editors reach for again and again. In this video, I'll show you five VFX you'll actually use that will instantly add a high-end polish to your edits. Let me start with one that saved me more times than I can count and it'll do the same for you. VFX one, when I first started editing, if a scene wasn't working, I'd often reach for big flashy effects to try to fix it. But once a mentor told me, hey, before we reach for anything big, let's just make a few small tweaks first. And he was right. The real fix is usually a series of small intentional moves. So remember, it's not about how flashy your visual effect is, but it's why you're using it. The most important thing when it comes to visual effects is intention. Here's an example. So I'm in Premiere Pro and in my timeline, I have a a shot of NFL Hall of Fame quarterback Brett Favre on the left here and an insurance salesman on the right. And this is from a commercial I cut. And when I was cutting this commercial, I realized that the best take of Brett's performance was different than the best take of the sales guy's performance. Because the camera was static and the two characters didn't overlap, I was able to use a very simple visual effect called a mask. Here's the finished shot, let me show you. Favorites. Favorites. But you'll see I have two video layers here. Well, what's going on? Well, let me show you what's on video layer one. Favorites. Favorites. You'll notice you heard Brett speaking in the final audio track, but he wasn't speaking in the video. Well, that's because I was able to use a different take of Brett. Let me show you what's going on just in video track two. Favorites. Favorites. So basically, I put a simple mask around Brett and I was able to combine the best performances from both takes. If I click on Brett here and click the mask, this is simply in the effects control panel under opacity and mask, you will see how I simply drew the mask with the pin tool around Brett here, and that basically reveals the shot underneath in this blank area on the right. So when I turn on both layers and show the mask, this is how it looks. But I didn't stop there with improving the shot. I could also adjust the rhythm of the shot by having Brett deliver his line wherever I wanted, really. Because you see, I have his audio disconnected from the main take. So if we go back to look at the original take, you will see that he actually says his line a lot earlier. You'll see it will be out of sync with the final audio. Favorites. Favorites. But once you have this mask and his audio, I could really move it anywhere. And I could have his line come up right before the salesman's line like this. Favorites. Favorites where they're almost on top of each other. So that simple mask not only allowed me to enhance the performance of the characters in this shot, but it allowed me to completely change and improve the rhythm of the scene. And if you wanna dive deeper into rhythm and my other top editing criteria, download my free guide at the link in the description. VFX2, this shot is from an anti-smoking commercial I edited. And at first glance, it looks simple. A cat knocks over a jar of glitter and walks across the frame. But that moment is actually built from several different elements. A lot of editors who are early in their career think it's all about just picking the best take and moving on. But once you know these little tricks, you can start getting the most out of every shot. So it seems like a pretty simple shot. The cat knocks over a cup full of glitter, adding to this big glittery mess on the floor, and then the cat walks off frame. But there's actually a lot going on to make this shot happen, and let me show you layer by layer. So the first layer, is nothing. This is what we would call a clean plate. So now we can start adding on top of that. The second layer, and let me show you the mask in my effects controls panel. So what I'm doing at th with this shot is I'm actually masking out the cat trainer who was letting the cat go before it jumped down and knocked over the glitter and walked off frame. So I currently disabled my mask and now I'll enable it. And it's basically revealing the clean plate underneath. Let me show you this mask in time throughout the shot. So the way I was able to have the mask move is I used simple keyframes. So you'll see my keyframes here 
Every time I wanted to move the mask, I would set a new keyframe using this button, and then I would change my position and let the software do the rest. So let's keep adding layers here. What do we have next? Well, I have the cup of glitter. And if I click on the mask, you will see the mask around the cup. And you will see I had to adjust the mask quite a bit as the glitter spilled and came toward the camera. And again, I've simply used the pin tool to set the mask, then I create keyframes and adjust the shape of the mask. And then finally, I have one more jar of glitter that we got as part of another plate when we decided, well, wouldn't it be great if we can make it seem even messier? So this is just a static jar of glitter in the background. And then when you put them all together, you get the shot that I showed you at the beginning. So on your next editing project, ask yourself, how can I use simple masking to combine the best elements from multiple takes of a single shot? Now let's look at a technique that can completely change the feel of a scene. VFX3. You probably already adjust the speed of clips all the time, but here are two ways to use speed adjustments that might surprise you. Most editors only think to use speed changes for montages or flashy transitions, but did you know you can also use use them in dialogue scenes. For this commercial, the premise is that it's an auctioneer who speaks really quickly, officiating a wedding, which is a pretty funny idea. And the actor did a wonderful job on set, but when we were in the edit, the director and I decided it would be even funnier if he was going a little faster. So we actually sped up his visual and audio by 20%. And when you speed up audio, it's gonna pitch shift it up so it'll sound higher pitched like Alvin and the Chipmunks. But we simply put on a pitch shifting effect to bring it back down to normal. And we ended up with this shot that I'll show you now. Having a livestock auctioneer officiate a wedding is wrong. Any objections, any objections? I need one objection. Who's got my objections? Speak now, forever hold the beast. Right now, I got one. How about two? Two objections, two objections. Here's another trick. You don't have to speed up an entire shot. Remember this cat jumping across the frame? Well, maybe you like the pace of the cat's walk, but you want the leap to have more of a punch. Well, I might place a cut after the cat jumps, maybe right here, and then maybe I'll just adjust the speed of the initial part of the jump by 10%, like this. I'll close the gap. And let's see if that added a little energy to the shot. It's fairly imperceptible, which is good. You want visual effects to not be too noticeable, but it does add a little extra energy. And I use small speed changes like this on parts of shots all the time. Now I'm gonna show you another trick that has saved me so many times. VFX4. Every frame counts in editing, right? Because sometimes you just need to hold a moment a little longer, even if it's just by a few frames. Yes, AI tools like Generative Fill can create new frames, but it's just not reliable enough for high-end work. Luckily, there's an old school trick that just works. It's called looping. Let's say we're working with the shot of this writer at his desk and the camera cuts right before we thought the shot should cut, just by let's say six frames. So I'm gonna go to the end of this shot here and go back a few frames, make a cut, then I'm gonna copy and paste that clip to the end of the shot, and I am simply going to reverse the speed. And now let's take a look. Now, when we play this, it simply plays to the end of the shot, then reverses back six frames, which can look pretty seamless and give you that extra little bit of shot you needed to fit the rhythm of the scene. And this works particularly well when there's minimal movement in the camera and minimal movement in the frame, so the reversing is less noticeable. Now let me show you one final technique that can tie all these together for a high-end cinematic feel. VFX5. Think about your favorite movies or TV shows. The camera is rarely perfectly still. There's almost always a little bit of motion in the frame. But a lot of the effects I've shared, like masking, work best with static cameras. So what can you do? Well, you can add your own digital movement. But the key is intention and subtlety. One of the biggest mistakes I see, especially in YouTube editing, is adding too much movement or unmotivated movement. That really just distracts from the story. Let's say we wanted to add a subtle digital push in to this shot. Okay, I've got my clip selected. I'm in my effects control panel and I'm working with scale. I'm gonna put a keyframe 
at the beginning of the shot, and I'm gonna put a keyframe at the end of the shot, and I'm simply going to adjust the scale by a couple percent at the end. Let's see how that looks. Very subtle, which is a good thing for a visual effect, but it does add that nice little sense of movement. Here's another tip. You can layer your digital moves on top of existing camera moves if you wanna push the emotion a little further. In this shot, we added a very subtle digital push in, and we also did to this shot, which already had a camera move. But start subtle, just a two to 4% push in, almost imperceptible, can make a static shot feel more cinematic. Try it on one of those static shots you used a mask on to draw out a little bit more of that emotion you're targeting. And if you wanna go deeper on emotion, download my free editing guide at the link in the description. Now you know five simple VFX that you'll actually use, but none of them will land if your edits don't have the right music. Watch this video next to learn my five-step system for picking the perfect music track for any edit. Happy editing.